Well, everyone, the iPhone 12 is by far one of the more interesting phones that Apple has ever made. And let's go ahead and see how this phone still holds up in the 2024 year. Now that this phone has gotten, you know, several software updates, this thing is not even being sold by Apple anymore. So let's go and see how this thing holds up. First things first, if you want to pick up some phones, I would recommend buying this year. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the iPhone 12, this particular phone on the front had a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. And it was actually a pretty good looking panel when it first came out. If you remember, the phone before this was the iPhone 11. And the iPhone 11 kind of had this interesting thing going around. I don't know why Apple did this, but they kept this like really weird low resolution panel on that particular phone and it did not age that well. Luckily for us with the iPhone 12s, they did go ahead and kind of give us a better looking display, which was very big. Unfortunately for us, this is kind of funny, they did end up increasing the price tag of the iPhone 12 coming from the iPhone 11. So because of that, the iPhone 11, I think was a better priced iPhone, but the iPhone 12 had a better display and definitely a better build overall as well, which was really nice. So that was kind of one thing to keep in mind here too. This phone also was the first one to kind of bring back the you know, flat sides. I think since like the iPhone 5S or iPhone SE, depending how you look at it. So that was like another big advantage for this type of phone as well. On the bottom, you were getting lightning and on the back side, you were getting that standard glass back, which still feels pretty good. Not a lot to complain about there. Dual camera setup on the top left corner, which is still fairly decent. You're getting MagSafe capability, which was a new feature at this time. MagSafe was, you know, basically MagSafe like on MacBooks and everything, but it was like this magnetic type of clasp that allowed the chargers to kind of fit, even MagSafe accessories to fit. They still use it, and it's a nice feature to have for the accessories. I don't know about the wireless charger, but it's still a nice feature to have nonetheless. So overall, I think with the iPhone 12 on the outside, it still looks and feels very, very good. Since this one is pretty much what the iPhone 15 kind of is built off of still, I think there's still a lot of overlap. And when I compared the iPhone 12 with the iPhone 15 on the exterior, I was still you know, able to see for the most part that the iPhone 15 and the 12 still feel very similar, but the iPhone 15 definitely feels a lot more premium with its frosty glass back, diagonal camera, and even like the curved side a little bit. But I think the iPhone 12 still feels very good for what you're getting, at least in this particular, you know, instance. So on the outside, that kind of covers it up there. Now, moving on to another interesting area with the iPhone 12 is it's with its camera. So this thing didn't invent really anything that this camera really brought. It didn't really have any like standalone like crazy feature that this iPhone brought that the iPhone 11 didn't already have to be honest. You're getting that dual 12 megapixel camera on the back, a wide and ultra wide camera, and then that 12 megapixel wide angle camera on the front. So you were able to get 4K at 60 on the front and the back of this particular phone, which is very big. You know, I liked having these types of camera features and that was something that was very cool. I will tell you though, from the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12, there really wasn't that big of a camera jump. You know, it was about the same thing that I've noticed before. And that's just kind of what is happening just, you know, year over year. There's not really like big massive movements that we're getting inside of these cameras like we used to. It's not a big deal or anything. It's just one of those things that I noticed and that a lot of people, you know, noticed as well. So within this camera, you know, it is it what it is. It's not like a massive deal or anything, but if you are wanting a better camera, it is kind of weird because the iPhone 13s were a significantly better camera than this thing. So if you're wanting a better camera setup, the iPhone 13s definitely were giving you an overall better camera in pretty much every single way than something like the iPhone 12. So that's just something that we noticed, you know, when I tested this phone, you know, thoroughly at that time. Again, it's not the biggest deal in the world or anything, but that was just one thing that kind of stood out to me. So with this camera, not terrible, but you are definitely getting better camera setups on the newer phones than you were on this one at that time. It really wasn't that big of an upgrade from the iPhone 11. Now moving on, the performance of this thing is only, you know, kind of set on its software updates. And luckily for us, the iPhone 12, is still getting software updates. This thing is still getting supported with software, which is very, very big. So if you were in the market and you were wanting to get a phone, luckily for us, this thing is still getting software updates, which is very, very important. Now with something like the iPhone 12, this phone started off you know, a couple of years ago, but it did end up getting iOS 17. And the best thing about this phone, I would say, is that this phone was the cutoff point for a bunch of features within iOS 17. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically, if you were going through and if you were actually buying a phone, you would notice that with then the iOS 17 like release stocks, the iPhone 12 was basically the lowest supported iPhone on a majority of those features on iOS 17, which is very big. So if you're wanting to buy a phone that is still supported with software, you know, this is one of them, but you're also getting a phone that is still going to be getting a majority of iOS 17 features as well, which I think is very big. So that in and of itself, I think is a very, very big thing to keep in mind. And I actually like that phone a lot because of this phone software support. So take it as you will, but this is still a very good phone from that specific perspective as well, which I think is very, very big. Now, in terms of the performance side of things, this iPhone is still, I would say like fairly good as well. 
So internally, you were getting that Apple A14 bonding chip inside of it with four gigabytes of RAM. Now, there's a few ways to kind of look at this, but the first thing I'll tell you with the iPhone 12, you were getting a decent chipset. So that chipset is actually fairly good for the most part. And that's something that I actually like a lot about this particular device. Having that chipset, the A14 Bionic, is still very decent and it still, you know, has a lot of power within it, has a lot of capability. And I think that in and of itself is really one of the better things going on for this particular device. The other thing is, is that with that RAM, it isn't really that much RAM compared to like newer devices. And it's pretty much half the amount of RAM you'd expect on like the newest iPhones. But I still think it's a good amount of RAM to have inside of a device. And from everything that I've ever tested on this iPhone, the only thing that I've ever even kind of been kind of sad about is the lack of ProMotion display. I feel like ProMotion does actually give you a much smoother, faster experience. It's not a faster phone, but it gives it the impression that it's a faster device and a smoother device, which is very big. So that's a very big thing to kind of keep in mind there. But I will tell you otherwise though, the iPhone 12's performance is still very, very, like it's still very good. So if you're wanting to go pick up a device and basically just kind of move on with your life, this thing is a decent option. And that's something I actually like a lot about my iPhone 12. So when I compared it against the iPhone 15s as well, of course, the app opening speeds and everything aren't like amazing. They're slow and, you know, they're not that slow, but they're slower than the iPhone 15. I'm still getting very good performance from something like the iPhone 12 right now, which is very, very good. Battery life is also one of those things that I always thought was kind of worse compared to the iPhone 11. But since like iOS 15 or iOS 16, we've been getting a lot better battery life from the iPhone 12. And I will say the iPhone 12's battery life is definitely better than the iPhone 11's. So if you're wanting a device with better battery life, the iPhone 11, you know, it's not that great anymore, but the iPhone 12's battery life is still actually pretty good. And I, whenever I do any sort of battery comparisons or battery tests, I'm still actually shocked by how good of a job the iPhone 12 can actually still do. It definitely doesn't keep up amazingly well with the newest iPhones, but it actually does do fairly well against the other devices. So that's kind of one thing to keep in mind there as well. So to kind of cover it up, what I'll probably tell you is, is that with the iPhone 12, I think this is still a very decent option for a lot of people to go ahead and buy. I think the iPhone 12, you know, covers a lot of, you know, coverage. I think it's a good phone. And I think for an overall decent device, this is a very, very decent option. It's not perfect, like I mentioned before. It definitely has some issues. It definitely has had some weird things going on with it throughout life. But I definitely do think it's a very, very good iPhone. The only thing I would recommend, though, and the only thing I would say is that if you have the option to, I would just recommend buying an iPhone 13. Buying an iPhone 13 makes a lot more sense for me. I feel like that is the iPhone that I kind of look at as probably being the significantly better one in most areas. And that's just kind of what I see. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that is a, you know, that the iPhone 12 was a worse iPhone. That just means that the iPhone 12 just may, maybe isn't as good of a deal as the iPhone 13. And the 13 was a significant upgrade coming from the iPhone 12. But that's kind of how I feel about it. Otherwise, the iPhone 12 is still a very good iPhone. And I'd probably recommend buying it for the most part. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.